with another presentation with Shanti Leon. Hi, Shanti. Hi. <laughs> oh, you can go ahead and uh, unmute now. Yeah. So we're going to begin with Shanti doing a sound blessing. Right. So go ahead and bring us into sacred space. Oh, you're still muted. Hold on. Let me unmute. unmute you. No. Oh, you. You're gonna have to do it. I can't do it. Okay. I see it. Okay. There you go. Okay. Cool. <laughs> So everybody come to a really nice place, seated or laying down, feel the weight of your body heavy onto the ground, onto the bed or the chair, as we center ourselves, take a deep breath in, hold three. This is communion. It's time for communion with your higher self. We're gonna open up the sacred space. We're gonna open up my eighth chakra, the Lila chakra. Thank you. And I'm gonna spread it onto you so we will all be in the Lila culture together. Yes, sacred space together. And I wish to open a light council session now. I wish to establish a connection with my higher self, the highest self. Come into the body. I wish for everyone to invite their own higher selves to come in. Invite it into your body. Feel it come in all the way down to your feet. And just keep breathing out and and like letting it sink and melt down into your feet. This higher, highest consciousness that is you. I wish to establish a connection with the masters, the ascended masters of light. And they've all gathered around and they gather around us in a circle because we are in our sacred space, our we're a culture, which is a divine circular space with a golden ray, they're saying. It's, in, it's encompassed with the golden ray, is what they're telling me. A beautiful, luminescent light, as David is being very luminescent today. <laughs> <laughs> and I ask for a divine connection with the Great Mother, of which we are all a part. Our bodies are her body. We live on her body and we are her, we inhabit her body and we are so grateful, Mother. We are so grateful to you. I invite and establish connection with the intergalactic and multidimensional beings of light beautiful beings from different dimensions that have come to help us on this journey. Mm -hmm. And the gods and goddesses and the great myths that have become the great archetypes for our divine work. Thank you, thank you. Divine gods from the... I also invite 
they're telling me to speak up, sorry. <laughs> they're also, um, I also invite the Serpent of the South, the great Sasha Mama, Lord of shedding our skin and the past and who we think we are, we also invite in the great Jaguar of the West, the beautiful Jaguar of the West that gives us the ability to see where we need to go with cunning ability, be able to have incredible discernment and maneuver through the challenges of life. Thank you, Jaguar. We also call in the hummingbird of the north, which provides some sustenance to us at all times, no matter what, even when we think we don't have it, we have it. Thank you, hummingbird. And then great condor of the east, that gives us the ability to rise above it all. Bless us all with that now. Ability to rise above everything that is happening. See the broad perspective. See it from the bird's eye view. Thank you. Honestly, 
Do not sorrow, do not pain, no, 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 no. Let me come over to you. Okay. <laughs> so I'm not so far away. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Mm. Wow. Oh my goodness. So. <clears throat> it's always a problem to be able to talk now. <laughs> I know. I feel like I've just been crying for a little while. Can we just cry for a little while? Right. Right. <laughs> that feels more appropriate. Yeah, right? After all of the blessings. And you you get to do this all day, so you get blessings all day. Right. No wonder right. you look so blissed out. Right, right, right. <laughs> oh, you look so good. So that's awesome. Cool. Well, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure. I'd have to ask who that was because I don't, I I've never, I've never channeled her before. Mm -hmm. and that, I mean, I've, I think I've channeled her in right in, because she, she's told me that before. She's showed me that that exercise of 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 taking tears, and she's, I so I know her, but I don't know who she is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so ancient, I, huh? Yeah, ancient. Mm -hmm. I kept seeing like, and I, maybe it's because we were talking about Egypt or something. Maybe, mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe that mm -hmm. brought her in. <laughs> Mm. Wow. Like, oh, they're talking about Egypt. Let's, that's my territory because I feel that, that energy from her. Wow. So. <clears throat> oh, my goodness. <laughs> so I guess we could start with telling us a bit about yourself unless you want to do, want to do the book. Do you want to read the book first? What do you think? I, I think, I, well, if we're going to talk about the book, I want to kind of just talk about what it is because it's kind of like 
Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess it's not weird. I guess people, this is time kind of becoming normal. So I guess it's not weird anymore at all. But like, yeah, the, um, basically, okay, this is, so we're still in the sacred space. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can feel it. I, and one of the things that when I went, when you asked me about this, um, this, beautiful uh blessing that you're giving the planet <laughs> with these um hold your wax still because the camera moves around oh sorry i need to <laughs> like i actually have it like balanced on my leg and that's not good uh-huh. so like let me do that cool there we go <laughs> um there you go um the yeah what they what the light council told me and um that's some that's a we can talk about that if you want but the when I asked about if it was appropriate or for the highest good that I participate because right now they have me on a pretty tight leash about what I'm allowed to do and what I'm not allowed I shouldn't say it that way it's a horrible way to say it because it's not like allowed it's just Uh it's just um what is suggested at this time for the highest good how's that Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. I when I asked about this they said um what really came out David was an outpouring about the work that you have been doing for the planet. So, and they asked me if it would be, if, if I would be willing to do this. And I absolutely, without a doubt, felt like they were absolutely right. We, I want to just, and I'm, and I'm saying, I want you, I want everybody to know this has, this is um, from the divine compelling, um, <laughs> I said not a marketing. Exactly. They wanted, they wanted to, I'm, in fact, they took me off Facebook. They took me off. I'm not even allowed to market. Like, so this right, isn't a marketing right. thing. This is an absolute, what my council told me was to honor you because you mm. have not just, but I want to start with me because what you've done for me. You took the whole certificate and large part of the degree program I, I did and um and i and yeah and i took the the first the first two semesters and the and i did the certificate program and i it is um it, it is such a profound blessing and it's not i mean here's the here's the thing it's like there's a lot of people out here who have been doing work with light or who are reiki masters and i grew up in that in this all of this we were doing healing hands when i was three years old like this is not new for me however what you provide in the community and the the safe space that you provide in your work and in the certificate certification program and the degree program if, if it continues the it is um it is so important and it's been so important to me. Um, I spent most of my time feeling really alone for the weird things that were happening to me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and it was so amazing to be like able to come into a community and talk and talk about things that really matter because they're fundamental to our existence as as human beings. It's a fundamental, it's why we chose to be human beings. I mean, it's so fundamental. And, and, and it, at the same time, it's so profoundly expansive from, from that point. So you start at the point of like, we all really, really like, like need this, like all people need water. Um, we need this training, we need this, this kind of program. And I, and I say this from the bottom of my heart, like if I did not have that, I wouldn't have gotten, been given the permission i mean they they guided me they guided me to to you in 2012 and they said it wasn't time and then they did this year that they, they were like this is now it's time it took me that long to be able to go <laughs> like, wow. Wow. and then when they and then when they when it did it just it was it's so perfect that they, they they there was nobody else to go to it was always this whenever i asked them it was always to go there and i'm eternally grateful but i want but more than just me because what it did for me was um, gave me permission to open up the gifts that I already had that that weren't being cultivated, that weren't mm-hmm. being nobody was supporting, nobody was helping um, me uh, 
be okay with those weird things like what do we do with that like and 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 i've i've had precipices like like thoughts about that but like never like was able to actually cult, like make it into anything and this actually did that for me and in with the community with you with with the courses um hmm. i looked forward to it so much it was the saddest thing ever to not be going i um but the, but the fact of the matter is that i want i wanted when I talked to them, they were impe- they were compelling me to let everybody know mm-hmm. that it doesn't matter if you're a master already. Mm-hmm. It's not the point. It's really the point that you're also because also there's something about being in a group with other light workers and you are cultivating this together and create. When we do that, we're building the energy and building that vibration up stronger. And that is then able to reach other people that aren't even in the class. This isn't even just mm-hmm. about it. It's it's really just exponential on its own, um, just in the participation of it. And it's so important. And I just I really kind of, I mean I, I I'm I'm sending people to you <laughs> to you because <laughs> I know a lot of people who are light workers and they don't know where to go. And I'm like, you know what? This is the most. Uh, it's just a complete holistic way of mm-hmm. of teaching this. It's not just here's some tuning forks you know what i mean you're, you're really really mm-hmm. going to the like the real nuts and bolts of like um consciousness consciousness and developing who you who you are at the at the source level that mm-hmm. and that's 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 profound work you are such a mm-hmm. blessing even my mm-hmm. even my mom who's like been witnessing all of this because i've been stuck in covid and here we are but like but um she's it's it's been profound for her to even just hear me talk about it when i come mm-hmm. out and say oh my gosh wow. i had a class with randy today or i had a class with gerald or whatever and it was just yeah. beautiful and you should have heard david talk about today and you should hear the all of these beautiful music i mean it really, and i'm not trying to promote it it's not about promoting I, I what I am promoting though for for a fact is is this consciousness development and I know mm-hmm. that this is a portal to that and I, mm-hmm. because it has been for me so in that um, I was able to start taking my gifts as a channel or more seriously um, because I kind of poof pooed it off like my whole life and I kind of made that um, an important um, Skill that I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start to, to cultivate this. I'm gonna start to actually put it as, I'm gonna honor it. I'm mm-hmm. going to honor this work mm-hmm. because that's what is required of it. And in the process of doing that, we had to come up with a final paper, and we read, um, and I read the, and it could be on anything we wanted, and but it would, you know, because everything is vibration and everything is <laughs> ultimately sound. So really, mm-hmm. it's all that. But um, I, I went into the light council and just started my process of being more obedient, is, which is not, you know, nobody likes that word, but I'm, I'm fine with it. But, um, <laughs> mm-hmm. but oh, more obedient with them, and they said, do it on devotion. And so I wrote this whole paper on it, and as I was writing it, and as I was presenting it, I was kind of being opened up to all of these amazing things about it, and they were like, you need to, this is a, this is a book. And as most things that are divinely given, it's already been done. So all of these things that we're divinely asked to do, like David has these amazing programs that he's doing, uh, these things have already been done. He's just <laughs> manifesting them now into this plane. Mm-hmm. That's that's the truth. None of this is none of it's new. Um, mm-hmm. You're not creating anything. You're you're really just manifesting, like anchoring it into this dimension. So, mm-hmm. um, and that's what's been happening. I, I wrote this this book they and they told me who to channel the got the light council said um they gave me 21 or 22 how many people 21 beings to to communicate with that were willing to be a part of this um and i went and just uh, did the whole thing they said uh, they say that i'm about three three nights and four days is what they keep saying <laughs> three nights and four days away from that were literally where, where they just want me to block up all night and all day for four days oh. and then just finish it because the, it's got 64,000 words. The words are, it's done. They just have these little things that they want me to do be- before each chapter and like just little things. And they, uh-huh. and they have 
and they also go, we want you to share this because they're using me <laughs> as a way to, for other people to understand, you know, to relate because I've been, you know, through a ton of abuse and, um, been super, super dirt poor, bankrupt poor, like, food and almost, poor, and almost you know? died. Yeah. I don't, I had it last year was on my deathbed for eight months and. So it, there's a lot of experiences that they're wanting me to share to relate with other people, um, to help to help all other people uh, with their own acceptance of themselves and um, of who they really are at the highest level, and that's that's the toughest. That's the thing because <laughs> my personality and my higher self are very different. But on the <laughs> <laughs> so I think what I'd love to do is if um, unless you had a question that you wanted to do anything clarification. Uh, right? I, yeah, no, I was going to see how devotion ties into all of that. Yeah, um, I, so I'm going to start with they have they've requested that we share from one of these. They gave me a group of beings that they thought would be appropriate for the highest mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. But I'm also, I would like to share the first two paragraphs of the introduction because it just kind of okay. sets up in not, it's not as clear as like the paper I wrote for you, but the paper's <laughs> now, you know, seven sixty four thousand words. So it, <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so here we go. Um, here's the, it says here. So this is how it started. This how it says, here's the deal. Beautiful one. I would love to be able to tell you that if you are devoted to source and follow the guidance of ascended masters and angels, you're always going to be led into amazing situations that always work out and life's a bunch of rainbows and butterflies buzz kill. It's not. In fact, you can follow <laughs> guidance of the highest beings and be led right into super hard, tragic situations. Just ask Jesus. I would also like to say that because I am communicating with light beings that I am living with the utmost integrity and serving selflessly with ease and grace. Ha! <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I am a flawed human being who is constantly working to integrate my ego so that it serves my higher self instead of my ego serving my ego, which is way too easy for me to fall back into. And then it goes on after that and to the stories that they want to say, but that that's just to set it up because this is in no way like, like high and mighty at all. I'm super just like everybody else. I make mistakes all the time. Yeah. We're going to add you to the, to the list of human beings. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's a privilege to be here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> okay, so I have a list of, like, if they said, and you can tell me what you want to do or what you'd even like to start with, or you can let me, do whatever, whatever, however you want to do this. Joan of Arc, Isis, Lazarus, Mother Teresa, Thamus, Mary, Archangel Michael and Hathor are the are the ones that they suggested we could read from. What do you think? Or what do they think? I keep seeing Mary. Oh, okay. Wow, so I have to tell you, so last um, summer I was in Mount Shasta and Mother Mary shows up, you know, in just in 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 the in front of me and turns around and she, and she says to me first, she says, I give you my heart. Mm. I'm like, whoa. She turns around and steps inside of me. And it's like, wow. 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 I mean, I think I have to tell you that when you shared that the first time with me, I, I haven't been able to get it out of my head mm. because I kept thinking to myself, does he know how? remarkable that is <laughs> does he know how beautiful and remarkable that is oh, I did. To have that experience it was a total just love the essence just completely overcame me mm. I have to tell you one thing it was funny it's like then then uh, Christ showed up Jesus showed up and I was like I don't know if I'm ready for that yeah <laughs> Right? I was like, I was like, I'm just gonna hang out with Mother Mary. I was like, I was like, Wee! right, right. Yeah. Oh my God, it's really affected me. It's because I'm able to to bring in that energy really easily now. Yes. Right? Yeah. And it changes your entire cellular system. Um, 
It really mm-hmm. does. Um, that's why, I mean, when you, I, in working with them, they've required that I have formal sessions with them. Like, not what we just did, like an actual formal session where I, I, I listen to them and I write down what they tell me. Um, and I let them come in. Sometimes we do exercises where they'll, we've been doing all kinds of interesting exercises with burning through ancestral things. And it's very interesting, um, the process of it. And then they teach me, like, it, you learn a lot from it. But just the process of opening the session and being in the, in the space, it changes your physical components hmm. of your body so that you're, you're um, because you have to, it has to in order to be able to contain that kind of frequency. And I never find the right words for it. It's not we say higher, but what does that really mean? It's not, yeah, it's, just it's intense. It's. Uh, it was interesting when I was talking with Jamie Lou about this, you know, uh, where we went into the heart. I noticed that it's a much, really much slower rhythm. I mean, it is not going, did, 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 it is like, I mean, like so, like the movement of the galaxy slow, right? Yes. It's like, that's why it's so funny because we're trying we all of us that are doing work like this that want to have our higher our higher selves or our source self or you know however we want to talk about it when that when i when i fully integrate with her which is very not a lot because Mm -hmm. my head is so like emotional and all this stuff but when i'm with her she is like this She's mm-hmm. just this steady rock. Right. And there's nothing. Right. I mean, it. it mm. And I'll, I'll be, I'll be like in it, going, "Are you not going to notice that the guy that just came up to us had these huge wings with the?" And she's like, "No, no, it's fine. Like it's fine." Like, she's like, <laughs> <laughs> like, Did you see what I just saw? She's like, <laughs> like she's. It's very yeah, st- steady, steady and slow and and. Um, right balanced not a lot of this going on (laughs) Mm -hmm. which is my head okay mary mary and okay mary um so i as i said mary our our mother she's been such a support and has carried me through so many sorrows and pains this is the conversation so i said i said to mary uh, mary when was the first time that i encountered you in this life and she said at your birth when you were born, I created you with a smile and blessed you. And I said, I see, I see it. Thank you for that memory. Cause I could just like, it reminds me so much of what happened with you. And I, when you said that to me, I went, Oh my gosh, that's, that's a, there's a synchronicity there. But, um, Mary said, you are a divine blessing for all who spend time with you. I was so thrilled to see you arrive in this life. Each life is such a blessing to the planet. And I said, is that because the energy that babies bring is so pure and strong? And she said, yes, and because the possibility for each child and the planet is equally strong. What will unfold is such a blessing for everyone involved. So much growth and love develops with each gift of life. It is truly an awe to behold. And I said, are you, are you there for all births? And she said, I am there in spirit. I said, why were you there for me? She said, you asked me to escort you. This was... Um, this was a particularly challenging incarnation for you so you asked me to be there for you to remind you who you are this life was to be tremendously painful and shielding you from truths this was divinely planned so that you could grow and you wanted to ascend so you asked to be put into situations that would assist you in that I said yes I know that this is true (laughs) and I said thank you for being there and she said and I and then I she wanted me to share one of my favorite Mary memories of Mary was when I was in college I was crying on my bed and just weeping and I all of a sudden felt that I was being picked up and rocked on the lap and in the arms of the mother yeah you can see it because it's happened to you too and I all of a sudden (laughs) that I was being picked up and rocked in her arms I looked up and saw her face and it was an indescribable beauty the colors were not from this world the shimmer of her whole body and she had a sweet song and rocked while she kissed me on the cheek I said I will never forget it 
the smell, the presence, her form, everything, I carry that with me at all times. And she said, you were so wounded. You were feeling so alone. I wanted to give you shelter. She was re responding to me talking about that experience. I wanted to give you shelter from the pain you were experiencing. And I said, thank you so much. It was one of my favorite experiences of my life. And she said, that was my intention. <laughs> and then <laughs> Mary started talking to me in the light council. Um, and then I, I was supposed to get an excerpt of the first, and I didn't. So what you, what you need to know is that when I write this, I, cl I set it up, I close my eyes, and I type. And then I don't look at it again till like, now. And I'm like, oh, I was supposed to put that in. So, like, and, yeah. So, <laughs> so <laughs> it's all, like, raw, like, just from the thing. I said, I said, Mary, what would you like to contribute in this book about devotion? She said, all hail the holy and righteous. They are the riches of the earth. Do not put wealth and riches and status before your highest being. When you focus on anything other than the expression of your highest self, you're putting your highest self last. This is opposite what needs to happen. This book is for the ones truly following their desires to serve. This is for those who wish to serve to their highest God potential. Gather around you who are breaking down the illusions and falsities. You who are will light the way for those lost in the forest. It is my prayer that this be the ha at the hands of all those who value humility and the good of whole of the whole above all else. And I said, how is humility part of devotion? She said, you will not be able to practice true devotion without humility. You can practice commitment, passion, desires with ego and self motives. However, devotion will, the very nature of it requires humility. Even when you are choosing an object of devotion that is a compartmentalized part of source, like money or partner, that's a compartmentalized part of source, the very act of being devoted to it requires that you put down your own agendas and ego ideas of who you are in order to serve. Devotion is to serve to your highest ability that which is worthy of your attention. I love that. That which is worthy of your attention. Because we so often spend a lot of time devoting to things that are not worthy of our attention. <laughs> um, yes. And I said, wow, that is really great take on devotion. She said, this requires your knowing of your highest self. It requires the humility to put your own desires behind for the sake of the fruition of the devotion. Humility is the laying down of your defenses and rationalizations for the sake of something greater than yourself. Humility is having faith that when you surrender to your source of devotion, you will be guided and taken care of. There is no weakness in humility. It takes great strength to know and be integrated with your highest self and be able to release your di desires for one that is broader. Just to see that a perspective might be broader is humility. Knowing that you don't have all the answers, even still knowing that you are the divine and that you are connected, but that from your vantage point, you will not have the whole picture. Not until you are so aligned with source that there is no saying where you start and where you end. And I said, how would you suggest someone develop humility? And she said, humility is a choice. It's a choice to imagine that you may not have all the answers. You don't have to know for sure that there is a source. You don't have to know anything for sure. Just being willing to imagine that perhaps there is something more. Hmm. Once you lose humility, you will be lost for quite some time. Because with a loss of humility comes a loss of the willingness to hear any other point of view. Mm -hmm. If I were ignorant enough to think that I was all-knowing because I was asked to birth the Son of God, I would have made grave mistakes. I would have attempted to prevent my son from fulfilling his mission. I had to constantly surrender my ideas about being a mother and my ideas about how a child was to act to my Heavenly Father. This was so far beyond where I thought I was as a human. I could, have, I could have chosen to let it inflate my ego. Instead, I knew that I was merely a vessel and that I would do my best to live up to the task I was asked to perform. And I said, were you scared or doubtful when you said yes to birthing Jesus? And she said, yes, I doubted all the time. I had such a feeling inside me that compelled me on, but my physical self continued 
continually went over and over and over it. I finally had to practice the releasing of all my worry to God. When I did that, there was an energy that filled my whole being. They kept me in the calm, receptive space. I followed my guidance throughout the day. I said, were you guided on what to eat and things that needed to happen to ensure the successful birth of Jesus? She said, yes. It was like being in a continual state of prayer or more meditation. I was, I was prayer, she said but it was my ability to receive like you do in meditation that allowed me to hear messages and to make the choices that would benefit the son of god i said did you feel like jesus was your son or was there always a sense that he wasn't your son that you were just providing a service and she said oh he felt like the love of my life and still does i was so grateful to provide the channel for him to come into the world and i was mm. blessed tremendously by performing this sacred duty I love him, but my devotion has always been first and foremost to God. So not even my love for Jesus could pull me from that. I mm. knew that when the angel came to me and told me that I was to have a child, that I needed to dig in deeper to my devotion. I was shown visions through the pregnancy about Jesus, who Jesus was and what would be coming. I said, so did you know it would be so tragic? She said, I did. I said, did you know when you said yes? She said, not consciously, but I was part of the plan, so it was part of the plan, so my highest self knew. And as I integrated more and more throughout the pregnancy, I was shown what was to happen. I cherished every second of the pregnancy and the birth and his life. I said, how did you feel when he died? Did you know he would ascend before the death? And she said, I, I did not know he would ascend until after he passed. I was shown a vision and was asked to assist him in the ascension. But the death itself was one of the biggest heartbreaks and heart openings of my life. Wow. Both tragic and immensely powerful. I mourn for the loss of my son and for the loss of the world, to the world. And I felt a beautiful uprising in my heart for what service he had and was providing. It was a complex mix of, mix of emotions and playing out all at the same time. I had so much support as well, Shanti. When you say yes to tasks of that magnitude, you are very supported and you mm -hmm. are also ready. I, she says, I had lifetimes preparing for this type of service. Yeah. I'm so grateful to have been part of that. And I said, how do you feel about the state of the world now? And she said, so much is shifting and so much positive change is possible at this time. We grieve for those who are suffering through this and don't know how to ask for help that is available to them. We grieve for some of the experiences that they are going, that are they are that are coming. Oh, they grieve for some of the experiences that are coming for all on the planet. But we know that it will all be a blessing for each person in all life. I am hopeful that peace will come soon, and life on the planet will elevate to the next stage of existence. It is a glorious one. And I said, any suggestions for what we should do to prepare? She said, activate your devotional heart to something bigger than your narrow perspective, mm -hmm. something worthy of you. And when she says that, and I can hear her saying it, when, when she says worthy of you, it's a capital Y. Mm -hmm. It's not what we think of. of it's more than that. We, we are so much more than that. Serve with humility. See, and it's a humble it, that's what's so interesting is you're more but you're also humble I mean mm -hmm. serve with humility and willingness to do what needs to be done step out on faith faith without fear of falling for stepping out on faith is in itself the highest form of action look for ways to practice kindness and compassion on those who are not able to activate their own devotional heart this is harder for them now than you may be aware of mm -hmm. know that we are here to serve and protect you. Light workers, especially, have the added responsibility of tending to their reactions to all they are witnessing. Hmm. What they do is doubling the impact for the world. So take care of your internal well being and make it a sacred practice to give love and kindness to yourself. It's, it's interesting. The, <clears throat> the focus is really service right and I can tell you the journey I went through was like 
I got it a long time ago that service is the only answer, mm -hmm. right? And then I thought in the beginning, I, I, was th uh, I know there was a component that was like, if I do service, I'll be cool. <laughs> right right i might even i might even get a really nice girlfriend yeah, right all right 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 all right right, like right, right. Uh, yeah I mean, there was a that part the behind right and then over time it 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 actually over many years it actually shifted until it finally even in the last few years it got to the point where this is the only thing to do yeah. This is the only, is. yeah, this is all there is. And what you said about th your own being uh, that you mentioned, it's like, it's really service with your own, um, your own potential, what, what your magic is to bring to the world. So it's not like you, you should just go out and be Mother Teresa. No, do what you do yes. to, to help. And Joan of Arc talks about that too, because I asked her, do you, do you think that we should all be like trying to aspire to what you did? And she's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, Absolutely not. <laughs> and, and Archangel Michael says in his thing about function, he uses the word function. And we always talk about purpose. We're always trying to, you know, everybody's like, what's your purpose? And I, the, the answer I've always gotten is that this is the purpose. Like, you're here, you're alive, and this is the purpose. Whether you like it or not, you're here now, and this is the purpose. But the function is exactly what you were just talking about. It's uh -huh. that individual, only you have that frequency, basically. Only you have that frequency, and that frequency is the function. Right. And that that function is is it's very specific. It's very it's tailored just to you. And anybody else that says that they and Jesus talks about this too. In the he talks about he used, of course he uses a, a parable about a tree, but like <laughs> but um but yeah the, the the it's a function. Everybody has a specific mm -hmm. function that they're here, and they can do that function as a trash picker upper and as a teacher and as mom and mm -hmm. and as a rock star it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what you do you still provide that function once you tune into it um and so that purpose is kind of a, a distraction from the real question which is what is your function like what mm -hmm. is what is that essence of you that you that is like the through line of everything that you do that provides the 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 consciousness the awareness the enlightenment of yourself and everybody around you because that is your specific function that you were here like archangel michael right. talks about how he is um as archangels that they have different functions than mm. human beings their function is different and and their function is is such a ingrained with their entire one it's it's one like you said, it, that is all there is. There mm -hmm. isn't a separation like, oh, I'm this and then I'm that and like a compartmentalized. No, their mm -hmm. function is their entire Their existence. being. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's interesting because I think a lot of people are struggling as to what their function might be. And it's really, the, I mean, the, the best thing I can say is it's already taken care of. It, right it's right it's it, it, sometimes i i know what it, it, here's where people go off it's like oh if i do this i'll make a bunch of money right right and it's interesting because this is what the message that i've been sharing a lot lately is when you go into service for people especially a lot of people i mean re regardless how many source kicks in and takes care of you financially mm -hmm. and it's really the new financial model you know it used to be okay you know how much uh roi can i get on this investment right or how much how many investors can i get how much money can i can i get from investors and you know but that's not the model anymore and it's really it's just from what I've seen in my life with all this money showing up to do 
all this work on the planet. It's, <laughs> I, th I think I mentioned, I had a reading last year where this woman said, there's a whole range of beings on the other side that are way more interested in your project than you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, do I have to do a business plan? Should I do like, you know, a proposal for nonprofit? And they said, no. And I said, no. And they said, do I even have to get out of bed? And they're like, no. And it's happening. It's so funny. My friend always says, you know, whenever, whenever anything happens really good, which is a lot lately, she'll say, did you get out of bed today? <laughs> <laughs> right? You're so supported when, when, you, when it's all about service. So it's so interesting because, and that's the devotion, is the focus, right? Mm -hmm. okay. I guess I ask you, I'm seeing that the way you're defining devotion is a focus, stable focus of energy towards your service. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, when you read, and I haven't even read through all of them yet, but when you go through all of these, we have gods, gods and goddesses, and we have... Um, Archangels and I mean I, there's four different archangels some I didn't even know existed but like I, like when you talk to all of them and you get the pieces from all of these different things you're like I mean some of them are saying it and one of them was supposed to be read today but I I couldn't tell you who said which one but but um one of them was saying that it is the force the absolute force that we're here learning we call it all these other things like we call it manifestation but they're saying no devotion is what is manifesting like and it is they like one of the beings said who knows who um one of the beings said that it was how they were able to tran to go from one dimension to the other was through devotion through the through the frequency of devotion wow. is how they travel and um and they were saying they're like you're learning it here because even the practice of i'm going to be apathetic and do nothing is still practicing devotion you're you're doing all aspects of you know, I'm going to be I'm going to be devoted to this person I'm going to be devoted to this job I'm going to be devoted to this concept I whatever it is we're all learning all of these different facets of it and it's a force it is a frequency and they were saying in the in one of one of the chapters one of the beings said something about how this is what we're waking up to now is that if that what we choose to focus on is what's going it's like it's like the propeller of that manifestation so you, it's very important what we what we choose to focus on and what and what devotion where we put our our devotional heart into it's 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 like what kind of gas you put into your car mm -hmm. it's very similar to that you want to make sure it's appropriate you want to make sure it's going to get you where you need to go and it's clean and it's pure and you know you, you don't want anything mucking up the, the the inside of your system and a lot of times we are devoted to things without even thinking about it and mm -hmm. all of a sudden we find ourselves through our conduct that we are fo focused and devoted on this thing and we're creating stuff that we probably didn't really want or <laughs> or was mm -hmm. destructive um, right, right. But it's still part of the learning process it's all every and according to these beings they're like you know go for it if you're gonna be devoted to money be devoted to money and then watch and then learn like what happens they say a lot of them are saying focus on the things that are as you grow through the stages because you're allowed we, we are here to to experience this right and to focus on you know learn all these different kinds of devotion but as you grow you'll want to be devoted to the thing that is like you said stable and consistent and is it's broader mm -hmm. it has a broader perspective on 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 everything so it, uh, even even if you can't do something like source maybe that's too wuji or whatever to mm -hmm. for some people um but you could do a concept um compassion truth justice mm -hmm. um equality those are like concepts that are bigger than us and they're actually from what they've told me divine concepts they're actually mm -hmm. us trying to manifest here our 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 divine justice system that we come from well, that's what we know we're trying to figure out how to implement it here in this you know this dimension this density dimension but mm -hmm. wow it's you know my focus i would say my devotion is 
to maximize the number of people I can help on the planet. And that, and what's cool about it is that keeps my mind busy. In a, <laughs> right? It's like my mind's got to right, right, do something. Well, okay, we'll give it this job. But that's, that's a pretty big one, right? We'll just, so I'm always looking at, it's kind of like uh, from my friend that, who works with the Buckminster Fuller it's, uh, Institute. It's all about maximizing the amount of energy we're putting in to get the greatest output to help the planet. Mm. Right? So I look at, and and I don't know that this, uh, you know, should be the the focus for everybody or anybody, right? But but it's 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 really um, what it what it what it's done it has a totally uh, created this massive support system, right? I mean, just really big time. So <clears throat> because when you when you go into that frequency of like. It is. It really is a frequency, and I don't. There isn't mm -hmm. a better word that we have as humans. It's a really strong, stable frequency. It's like, and it doesn't ever waver, and the focus stays completely uh, consistent over a long period of time. Yeah. When it's that strong, it's yeah. like, it's a, it's, a, it's a big one. It is. <laughs> and when you tune into that, that when we are still making our body because that's hard for this for our bodies to do that in the beginning of course but like mm -hmm. when you are able to be in that frequency in that stillness that you're talking about it's it's like a it's movement but it's just in this incredible synchronistic non-jolting balance just just like you said and and when you're in that you are able to attract or the other beings are, that are also on that frequency are able to come and and work with you more directly because you're because you're not doing this. It's it's like when we're trying to catch a fly. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like right, you, sure, you right. Can, they're just so, it's a different radio station. Exactly. It's <laughs> like you gotta kind of shift yours so that they can kind of commune, and they will. They're so they're so willing that's i mean again though as my as archangel michael said that's that's the function that's okay. everybody has like i was shown my function um right before i died i always i my mom hates that i say it like that but um i i went through a of death and i sold everything and thought that and we that i was dying so i right before that though which is so ironic or not I, I, I found my function. I was told what it was. Wow. And what they said it was, and you don't have to, by the way, you don't ever, sometimes it's hard to put words on. I'm still having a hard time with what the words are, but mm -hmm. like in the infinity symbol, mm -hmm. and you go like around the eight, you know, the eight, and that point where it crosses, I call it like the intersection, and you could say like the nodal intersection, or but just mm -hmm. the intersection point. Mm -hmm that little portal that little point is my function and which sounds crazy but <laughs> but um but it makes perfect sense because I, they, showed, they showed it to me during i was um singing i was the lead singer of, the, of this band and we were doing a show and i was realizing that my job they were showing me while we were doing it that was to give the audience mm. exactly everything that's one side of the eight right that's mm. the audience the other side was the band so and i was right in the middle so what it's the I, intersection of where things come together yes that little portal where the different the different extremities mm. or st extremes or the different come and join and then it's like the there's a there's an integration point because at that point i was able to communicate with the band exactly what they needed and and also what to the band in the way that they needed and then going back to them and we had the most amazing spiritual experiences ever in this band because i figured out what my job was i figured mm -hmm. what what's my function my function is this my function isn't look at me i'm the singer who cares oh my like, god you know I, I, mean? <laughs> I, okay, I got something that came up that's really cool so i was just talking with someone about listening a couple of people i've been talking with people about what real listening is right and and I said, you know, to one person, I said, well, uh, what if, how do we listen to people that are hurting others? 
you know, and then Trump comes up and this whole thing, right? And so then, but I just got this epiphany and it ties into exactly what you're saying. It's like <clears throat> really listening means that you're seeing their template of, of perspective. You're seeing yours, which normally people go, I see your template, I see mine, and that's ridiculous, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> but also seeing the possibility that there might be a higher or or wider perspective from that you to add to yours right which means it's like you're in the still point between the two perspectives looking yes. for the still the point. Yes. <laughs> right which right. is what we were just talking about that uh -huh. Uh -huh. space exactly. Uh, right. Absolutely. It feels like stillness, but it's not. It's absolutely still moving. But like, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Wow. No, that's exactly. And that's a beautiful way of expressing. It's a beautiful way of expressing what listening is. I mean, when I would go up to the audience members, I would get flashes of their somebody. One woman had just been abused by her husband and I got like mm. a flash of it. And this other one, I mean, I get flashes of like what's happening to them. Mm -hmm. And so I would put it in the song and go right up to them and sing them. Like, wow. I happened to be attracted to that, seeing it with the anger. It was an anger song. And I would give it to them. And these people would line up after the show. It's a rock concert for crying out loud. <laughs> rock, line out crying, crying. They're like, thank uh. you for giving. And I knew what was happening wow. was that you're just, like you said, listening. You're in that still point and you're like, okay, I see what you are needing and I see what you are needing and we're going to come together right in this little point. And it was, it was, it was a prep. And they told me, and they said, you can do this in anything. You, this is your function uh -huh. no matter what uh -huh. you're doing. And then I literally came back within a week from finding that out and then was on my deathbed for eight months. Uh -huh. It, which was really crazy because I thought to myself, oh, I'm going to go and I know exactly what my function is. I'm going to do stuff. Like, no, you're not. <laughs> We're going to change your whole body now. Like, <laughs> we are starting over. Wow. Get it. But, wow. Did you want to read somebody else or no? Uh, what do you think? Let's see. How are we doing until 1.30? We started at one forty. Yeah, we still got about 15 minutes or so. Okay. I'm not sure what how long they are because I barely even know who said what. But if you wanted to mm -hmm. read somebody else's, I'm you have to pick this time though. So well, you know me, the Hathors. I love the Hathors. Okay. Okay. So everybody, as you know, have has like a their own little personality. So Hathors are very different. For those you don't know, Hathors are these. Uh, aliens from Venus that Tom Kenyon channeled. They were out in ancient society in Egypt, and the, so their carvings are all over Egypt, and they're all about love and light. They're kind of fun, too. Yeah, uh, so, yeah, and I, I, and I say the Hathors are intergalactic and interdimensional beings who connected to Egypt through the goddess Hathor. Hathors um, tend to work with sound healers since their main form of communication is through sound patterning mm -hmm. and I've been fortunate enough to channel their sounds in my sound sessions and that they first started to come to me while I was in the sound healing school globe I would sit down to meditate and they would show up and ask are you ready to work wow. <laughs> and I'd say and I'd say yes and then they would take me on these journeys just like you said <laughs> exactly and, and they would say they take me on these amazing journeys and I said we were jumping timelines and they were uploading codes and I've had yeah. sessions with them where they put you know five tubes of light into a side of my brain like in like a pentagram and then activate them and lit them I mean it's just like they then they cool. linked to my corpus callopes and they, they were very powerful, advanced and generous beings who are eager to assist us in advancing our species. And I said, I said, um, thank you for being here and thank you for uh, wanting to contribute. Why are you on earth? Why are you here on earth? And they said, to develop a better relationship between humans and multidimensional beings, to bring awareness, tools and techniques that are more advanced to your planet to aid in your ascension. I said, what would you like for, for the readers to share with our readers? They said, Shanti, it's imperative that people on Earth begin to open to other forms of beings that are visiting this planet in order to advance and protect the species. There is so much that these beings can contribute to the planet. These beings can speed up or even skip through stages of development. 
it, it is our desire to assist all who ask in teaching them skills and techniques, formulating their system to be able to adjust to the rapid shifts of the environment and to help avoid the pitfalls that we fell into as a species when we went through a similar shift on our planet. And I said, um, they said that they, we were talking about how they took me to their, through what, anyway. I said, um, so I said, I didn't, I didn't remember everything on that journey that you took me on. And they said, yes, it happens. It is the shift in the pull of gravity that causes most to fall asleep. You will get used to it as you keep, as we keep returning. I said, is there a benefit to visiting? They said, yes, it allows us to do some work on, on your system that is structurally, um, that isn't allowed in this in this dimension at this point they said so we can do some deeper work and then ship you back home <laughs> and huh? said, would you even be able to explain what we've been working on and they said it's they kind of took a minute and they were like it's the way your neurons are fry firing and the connections that they have we are forming new patterns but we are also changing how the patterns fire that is the simplest way of describing it and I said, what is, what is your definition of devotion? And they said, devotion is the state of committed action such that one's focus is completely on the object of devotion. I said, what is the benefit of being devoted? They said, it causes one to launch their actions into an organized form that will manifest more accurately. Mm -hmm. See, they're very, they're very scientific when they talk. Anyway, are you devoted? I, I said, are you devoted? They said, yes, we are devoted to the service of all life. Um, I said, they said, we are aspects of the divine and are wishing to carry out our experience and wisdom to all those on their way to where we are now. We made many mistakes and we hope to help other planets and species to not make the same mistakes we made. Servicing others is servicing the all with a capital A. We don't use the same words that you use in terms of source and God. There is all that is and there is an illusion of all of other separateness we are aware and we are aware and live with the inclusion of the all so we speak about it differently we see that the biggest issue with devotion on our planet is misguided devotion devotion that is being practiced on an object that caused self-destruction hmm. it is happening because most are unaware of the truth of their very nature they think that this existence is the truth if you don't have a type of car you aren't successful. If you don't have a certain income, you are less than. Every bit of value is placed by external societal agreements. And if you don't meet that, you fail. This is unfortunate because success is just a construct that has been made up. And to try to live up to this fallacy is denying your truth and setting you up to be disappointed. It is such a disservice to put the societal standard of looks, status, and success on yourself as the goal and the determining factor of your value. It is a disservice to yourself and the community because you dishonor yourself and spend your whole, your precious focus on that which has nothing to do with you and the purpose you were born to fulfill. It is a distraction. There is, quote, and they, you know, didn't mean this in the biblical sense, but there's evil in this. Mm -hmm. um, like that, I, it felt like they were saying, like, that is the real evil, is when we do that. Do you know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Then, oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Keeping, it, it, there's just one more, it's keeping certain um, kind of house, like keeping a certain kind of house and car and hair, etc. The distraction of, is it takes you from the real work that you can do, that you came to do. Um, learn to heal, learn compassion, learn to manifest, etc. Have, having nice things isn't the distraction. Putting emphasis on it as a determining factor for your worth hmm. is the distraction. Hmm. And you will never win that game because it changes every minute. And this this minute, these pairs of jeans are the ones that say you made it. And then the ne next minute, these jeans are out and everyone is wearing shorts as a status symbol. They cease to detach... Detach yourself from this mindless game. It is not serving anyone. Keep focused on the way you... Isn't it funny to think of like an alien, like a intergalactic, interdimensional being talking about... Jeez. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> detach yourself from the mindless buddy. They know, they know us. Detach yourself from this mindless game. It is not serving...
hearing anyone. Keep focused on the way you feel. How are you processing what is shifting in the world? How to serve others? How to fulfill your inner calling? Be kind and compassionate. Take care of what you have and integrate a sense of value for yourself and all that all you come into contact with. There's so much more to focus on and most humans spend half their life indulging in the I got this game, buying this and buying that. Put down the cards and allow yourself to grow your heart connection. Uh, work on using light and sound and energy to shift your environment. Teach others what you have learned. Devotion will give you many more ideas than these. Tap into the heart of source, unplug the unnecessary and and spread this vibration throughout your planet. And I said, in your idea of devotion, do you have an emotion or a feeling that coincides, coincides with this practice of devotion? He said, we don't have emotions the way that humans do at this point. We have advanced past that. It is more like an energetic wave that we ride. You may experience an emotion or love or care for your object, but for us it is more of an energetic wave that moves us rapidly and cleanly. There are no bumps. The flow is clear. This is so funny. This is what we were just talking about. The flow is clear and we ride through our exi throughout our existence. I said, is there anything else you would like to share? And they said, we are anxious to help those who are ready and willing. See us in the trees. Call us by, by name. Invite us in and we will be happy to work with you. Wow. So, I was just thinking that two things about sound. One is that we use it, and they just mentioned it, to create environments, spaces that bring us to peace over and over for physically, mentally, emotionally, and even spiritually so that we can then get more stable so that we're contacted, right? And so we go into the zone where we're guided and everything is taken care of, right? So it's a way of bringing us by, by way of peace mm -hmm. to a place of... of of all yes. right but then the second part because I was just thinking of the the sound you did at the beginning is after you get there then it's party time right <laughs> it's like okay let's use the sound just to resonate this this realm yes. right and all of a sudden it's like Woo! and it's like so now we're not trying to get there we're just like resonating it yes. <laughs> Because like Archangel Michael said that, that his home there where the the angelic realm is a hum is how he said it. <laughs> he said it is a hum that we that is in us when we come further away we can kind of feel it and it when it when they go back they become the hum. Like when they go back into it it's a it's an enjoy it's a, a complete like unification with with the hum. So that's okay, the so you know me. What frequency is it? <laughs> I know, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Is it like the same hum for everybody, or is it? Or because I get, you know, it's the it, the number one thing is it's a stable, profoundly stable, consistent vibration. That's the 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 core of it. Whether it's you know high or low, but it's interesting to see. Okay, is is there a hum of this source or galaxy or all? Or is everybody on their own hum? Or is it common? I bet it would be a combination. There's like your own like, ee, and then there's also the. <laughs> okay. We I have to we have to find it though because he said he literally says it. So you're just channeling. You're just channeling right now because I was like you're exactly right. He says in the thing that it's an orchestrated. Hold on. He says exactly what you just said. Um, huh. I just have to find where it is in the conversation. Um, he talks about being the leader of the army, what that is, and like what the weapons really are, and mm -hmm. by assisting humans. Uh, let's see, I'm sure it's beautiful. Oh yeah, here. I said, um, he said the system of what you reap, so you shall. So for example, is an intention that we assist in carrying out, because he's talking about like what I said. What do you do? Like, what is your job? Like, and he said, um, and he, I said, how do you do that? And he said, by assisting human beings at places and precise times, whispers in the ear, arranging a multitude of scenarios to line up in a certain way that is for the highest good and services the order of the system. And I said, sounds complicated. He said, yes, I'm sure it does. And he laughed. He said, but it is a beautiful, composed song that we all have a part 
part in and plays continuously no matter what happens. The song is the framework of how we orchestrate the underlying structure of your world. (laughs) 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 And then, like, where does he talk about that, Tom? Because it's so cool. Like, uh... Hmm. Because it coming back is in Carter's human beings hmm. are not. Oh, because I was asking him about the, you know, because we have like Metatron, and I was like, is that an archangel? And so I was asking just like stuff like that, and he was saying, no, there's hybrids. Um, it, it's so amazing because when there's that consistency of a hum, which is profoundly consistent, it is so peaceful. I mean, it's so. It's like nothing can affect you. And honestly, if you're not ready for it, it's uncomfortable. If you're, mm. if you're in a certain place where you can't handle that, uh-huh. that, that can be very. This is why I really do think like it's important for us to I always say, "Is this for the highest good?" Because some people are not. That's going to be destructive for them. They they won't. They'll they'll feel because of their own resistance and things that they're they're working through. They will feel a resistance towards that incredible unconditional love that just is that all that just is that encompass and you, I know you I mean you 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 jump there all, all, like throughout the day that's where you live most like in mm-hmm. between that's where you, we'll find you but like for sure <laughs> but like for other for other people that are in different stages that can be really um jarring in the beginning that's why uh, there's so many people that resist um the work because they have to kind of in order to do that oh my gosh like my aunt who died in april um she's come back to to visit me and she's been telling me where she is in the stage of what's happened since she's died and one of the so she kind the way she said it and this is just her way of saying it there's i'm sure a thousand but she was saying that she was working on the the macro in the very beginning so she was just going through all of the big the big overarching things that happened in her life. But when the next time I saw her, she said she was working on the micro and I was like trying to understand. And she was saying, she said, everything, everything has the same weight between the macro and micro. It, it really isn't. We think mm. it's weighted more like you mm. did that. And that was really bad. And, but no, it's all weighted the same. Mm. And the biggest thing is just, um, being able to see it and accept whatever it is that you're seeing and to understand that, um, sorry, I was looking for the hum and then I got distracted. Um, but like, but the, uh, yeah, that it, it's that in that, in that space, it, there is all of these little things, like all the things that you didn't know that you did, you know what I mean? Like when you said that, that actually hurt that person. And she said, there's no judgment. Nobody's judging, but you need to see it. You Mm -hmm. need to see that everything is interconnected that way. And you need to see that it's more, and, and that kind of work it, um, is what we have to, we come across when we do the work of like having to get out of the way, go into the humility space and just go with, okay, well, you're going to lead this. I'm going to just be, I'm just the, I'm just the portal. I'm happy to be here. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But, um, we have to go in order for us to do that. We have, to, there is a, a part of us that has to be willing to also like they, you know, I'll sit down with sessions with them and they'll say, I'll go, am I a jerk? And they'll go, well, you can be, you can, you can be rough. You can be cruel. They'll say stuff. They'll, they'll tell me straight up. Like, no, that was cruel. What, how you said that. Mm-hmm. And I'll go, okay. And they'll, and they'll even tell you why, where it comes from, uh-huh. how to work through it and how to do it a better thing next time. There's no judgment. Nobody's judging you. Nobody's saying you were an awful person. How do you change it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just like, oh, okay. I see that I did that because the truth is when we pass over, we're going to have to we're going to do that anyway. I mean, that's what uh-huh. my, my aunt has been going through. She said the micro was actually harder than the macro. Mm. She mm. said it, she said it's not because of anybody else. It's because all the things that you didn't know that you did, like meaning when you said that, that hurt that person's first, that fe- person's feeling and you didn't know, right. and when you, you know what I mean? And when you said that that impacted their family and you don't, you didn't know that that impacted their family. Right. And that's not your fault, and it's not to be judgment. It's just to see that we're connected, and mm-hmm. that we and our we matter. Like our impact is important. You know, we have an impact on on our everything we think and do, and mm-hmm. we are impacting. We are a drop in that that water, and it ripples. 
we all feel we're all in the same pool. Right. We, we feel it. So it's, we're almost out of time here. But right. one thing I, th I thought uh, when you were speaking just before this was when people uh, are taken into this realm and it can be scary and rough because I think what can happen is it can totally destroy their world because all of a sudden you know the friends I have you know it's like I or the work I'm doing everything like has no meaning anymore and in, in fact the meaning of who they think they are completely can and I just thought in that moment you know the cool thing about what's going on with the virus and everything on the planet is it's broken down our expectations of who we are, of, of, of the whole system, right? So it's kind of training us to go into even another transition. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, so you're saying that um, it's broken down. Can you Can you speak more to that? Yeah, it's like it's kind of like it's we're getting practice on what it's like for something to break down. Yeah. And so it won't be so hard when it the breakdown is we're now in unconditional love all the time. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, but right. you're so right, David, because when we when we go into that space, there is a crack that has to happen. Uh-huh. Right? Uh -huh. Right. Like, I mean, not to get political, but there has been a leader that I've said, if we could just crack open 20% compassion in that person's heart, we would have a totally different experience from that person. Like, just 20%. Mm. Just, just crack. Wow. But there is a crack that has to happen. Right. And that's why when Mary was saying our humility, when you lose your humility, it takes a while to get back because you don't want to hear input from anybody you don't want to you shut uh -huh. all that down right uh -huh. yeah so what would you say is the sound of the hum oh right oh, gosh i wish i could have found it because i was too busy like i was like going back and forth trying to okay we yeah i'm gonna have to i want to find it i'll, I'll send it to you because okay it's, cool it's just this little thing that where he talks about what it's like to go back and forth between his world and ours, and it's a hum mm. that leads him back, which I wow. thought was so. And then when he go, gets there, he becomes the hum, which is wow. really neat. What is the sound? You you go first. Oh God! You're like oh. you're you've got two feet there already. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's interesting. It's like to access it, I have to drop into my heart. It's funny because it's just the sound that feels the most comfortable to me, mm -hmm. right? Or the pitch, at least. I want to do 10,000 frequencies and notes at once. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I can't do it. It's okay. No. Here, it, here it is. Here it is. Yeah, I can hear, but I can hear what you just said. <laughs> right. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> I just did it. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly. That's exactly right. I I think that that's super accurate. It it is. It's a multiple like you said it's a beautifully orchestrated and it's it's everybody's function by the way the fact that you had to go into your heart. The heart in a lot of systems is that connecting point of the infinity. So uh -huh. You've got the three chakras above, mm. it goes through the heart and three below. And mm -hmm. this is the part, 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 that portal, that communication point. So, of course, you have to go into the heart to get to access the other dimensions, right? That's have, the portal. Have you seen the Hathor Material book by Tom Kenyon? Not the book, no. Oh, my God. In the book, the Hathors describe in detail how to visualize a figure eight going through your brain in all different directions. No way. And they, you have to visualize a, a, a beam of, or, or a, a dot of light or, or a speck of light going through this way inside your brain. And then you go the other way. And then you go this way. Right? And then you go that way, the opposite of that. And then, so they, they, they walk you through how to do the figure eight. I didn't throughout. know that they did that. I just yeah. thought they did that on me because something was wrong with me. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
Oh, it's already in a book. Apparently, that's their thing. I didn't know. No, yeah. I should get the yeah. book. Yeah, yeah. They, they do this thing. They also did this thing with like, they called it liquid, like a liquid gold, which was like a white gold. They do that one. They teach that one. The circle, they have the it's circle, the, yeah. The circle, but it's a circle this way, the circle this way, the circle this way, and that way. I get the book. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they gave me that exercise, and they have me do this special one with liquid gold, like, then it uh, just swirl. Wow. I don't remember them saying liquid gold, though. Oh, there's one other that's really cool. They have you visualize an octahedron inside your head, okay. and then then you spin it different ways, and, and then they have you visualize it as if you're six feet outside of your body, looking down at it. Oh, you're looking at it, like through it into yourself. It's well, it's like, yeah, you're, you're taking your perspective from out of your body. So it's like you're, yeah. you're, you're doing astral projection, right? Yeah, and then, that's so, also how you transport. Yeah, you totally. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, they're teaching you how to jump dimensions. Yeah. That's, is that, there's a book. <laughs> yes, it's in the book. They even have drawings. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Well, this has just been... I love you so a much. Blessing. I love you. And I'm so grateful to you and I, mm. I, I honor I honor the work that you're doing. Mm. Oh, and and literally it's when I tune into you and the work, it's like and there's your army. Like, like it's, a, <laughs> it's an army of light workers that come forward. You've got all you've got scientists, you've got oh, you've got um all kinds of different beings and like with different shapes and just beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank you for everything that you're doing, for everything that you're offering. Thank you for the change in, in my life that you've made for me. I am incredibly grateful. Thank you for who you are and what you're doing in the world. <laughs> okay, I'm going to get the closing video here okay. ready and play it. Let's see. Comments okay. closing. Cool. Okay, view. Full screen. Thank you and take care. Blessed one.